John Gotti and the Gambino crime family might be the most well-known names in the American Mafia. That family was taken over by Carlo Gambino in 1957 when then-boss Albert Anastasia was assassinated at a barbershop on Park Avenue in one of the most famous mob hits ever known. But before these men, the family was led silently by boss Vincent Mangiano. He was appointed by Lucky Luciano when the Modern Mafia was founded in 1931 and he ruled for 20 years. Despite being one of the original bosses of the five families, almost nothing is known about his long reign, which is the way he would have wanted it. Don Vincenzo was born in Sicily on March 28, 1888. It's unclear of when he exactly immigrated to the United States, but by the time the Castelmarisi War broke out in 1930, he was already a high-ranking member of the Menino family, with his power concentrated at the Brooklyn waterfront. He controlled the longshoremen through Anthony Anastasio, president of their union and fellow member of the family. Goods could not be loaded or unloaded from ships without under-the-table payments. Mangano's life is only known to us through fragments, and the biggest piece comes from former Bonanno family boss and founder, Joseph Bonanno. Mangano was first mentioned in the Castelmarisi War. During the war, Mangano's boss, Frank Scalisi, was a Marizano loyalist, and he was forced into retirement when Lucky Luciano became the ultimate victor and Mangano was selected to replace him. The heads of the newly formed families became permanent members of the commission, a board of directors for the organized crime world created to prevent any wars from ever happening again. In the 1930s, the commission had its first test when several members wanted to eliminate special prosecutor Thomas Dewey while others were opposed. Bonanno recalled Mangiano's position to be, if we lose our heads, then we'll wind up burning down our foundation. The hit on Dewey never happened. Bonanno also recalled that Mangano was the mafia member who coined the term La Cosa Nostra, which means our thing. Mangano was one of the oldest members of the commission, and he was in his 60s by the time his reign ended. He was more old-fashioned than his American counterparts, and felt that American culture was corrupting the traditional values of Cosa Nostra. While some newspapers gave Mangano the nickname of the Executioner, his longtime underboss Albert Anastasia was known as the Lord High Executioner. Anastasia ran what was called Murder Inc., the enforcement arm of the mob, and this got him close to the other bosses in the families, something that Mangano viewed as subversive. By the time the 1950s came, Mangano was already seeing himself as an old man, according to Bonanno. This was perceived as weakness by Anastasia, and the two men started having more and more conflicts with some accounts that they almost got into physical fights. The final straw for Mangano that his underboss was going rogue was when Anastasia became close with the Luciano family boss, Frank Costello, and the two men started doing business together behind Mangano's back. According to Joe Bonanno, fear is when you think ahead about what may happen to you. Fear is anticipating the future and assuming the worst possible scenario. Each man felt the other would act first. Each wanted to be the first to act. On April 19, 1951, Anastasia acted first. The body of Don Vincenzo's brother Philip was discovered in a Brooklyn marsh with three bullets in his head. He was the consigliere of the family. Don Vincenzo disappeared on the same day as well, but his body was never found. Ten years later, he was declared legally dead. Anastasia would never confirm or deny the role he played in Mangano's demise. But Don Vincenzo's death broke the rule that bosses cannot be murdered without commission approval. However, his elimination was the result of politics, and so the commission looked the other way as everyone found something that they could benefit from with him no longer there.